Hello world, I'm Chenen Nanta Senamad, Senior Developer Advocate at Snowflake. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a dashboard in Snowflake Notebooks using Stringlet. Briefly, Snowflake Notebooks is a Jupyter-like notebook environment that allows you to code in Python, SQL, and also comment your code using Markdown. And so without further ado, let's dive in. So before proceeding further in creating the notebook, let's first have a look at how you could retrieve it first. So you want to head over to the GitHub repo of the Snowflake notebook demos, and this will be provided in the video description. So let's have a quick look. So Snowflake Notebooks, as already mentioned, is an interactive development environment where you could do data science, data engineering, AI ML workflows in Snowflake end to end. And so you'll be able to have access to, you know, like writing Python, SQL, right in the same notebook. Let's have a look at some of the contents that you'll be able to find in the repo here. There are topics covering getting started, data science, data engineering, machine learning, and also using notebooks. So what you want to do is scroll to the top, you'll find dashboard with Streamlit. You want to click there, and then you want to download the Jupyter Notebook file here into your local computer, and then you want to load it in to your Snow site on the Snowflake platform. To do that, you want to click on the projects and then notebooks, and then here you want to click, and it will provide you with two additional menus. You want to click on import, and then you could you know select your Jupyter Notebook file, and then select your uh, warehouse, and then click on create the notebook. And once that you have done so, you'll be able to see this particular notebook load up in your Snow site interface. So let's have a quick look here. So you'll be able to see that we have only a few cells here, and then all of the cells are annotated using Markdown. So in this first cell, it's called MD title. So you'll be able to, you know, like jump around, hop around to the various cells um, during this tutorial or when you're trying it out. Um, so let's cover from the first cell. So this cells will provide you with some preliminary information about what we're going to build today. And as already hinted at the beginning of the video, you're going to build a dashboard in Snowflake Notebooks. And this, you could think of it as your starter template. Um, you know, you can modify the underlying data ingestion with your own. So here we're going to use an artificial data set that we generated for a hypothetical YouTube channel. So the dashboard will be displaying channel metrics from the YouTube channel. And then we're going to use the Streamlit user interface for visualizing the charts and data frame. And so for actually generating the data, we're going to use NumPy. And then to perform data wrangling, we're going to use pandas. And then we're using date time for handling data um, that is pertaining to date time data type. And as mentioned already, Streamlit will be used for displaying the visual elements, the charts, and the data frame. So let's go ahead and import the essential libraries here, as already mentioned. And what you want to see here also is we're using four libraries, as mentioned. If you click on packages here, you're going to notice that we have installed the packages via Anaconda packages here. And we have NumPy, Pandas, Python, Streamlit already installed here. So they are the prerequisite libraries. All right, let's proceed further. So on to generating the YouTube channel data. So now we're generating the data using NumPy for the numerical processing and then Pandas for displaying the data frame. And in order to filter the data in a form that will be used for the dashboard display, we're going to use Pandas. So each row of the data frame will comprise of the channel metrics, which we'll show you in just a few moments here. So here we're calling the cell pi for Python and then giving it a short, you know, like acronym, like, okay, it's about generating data. So we call it pi underscore generate underscore data. So we're using NumPy, we're setting the random seed for reproducibility. You could change the seed number to other numbers that you like. So every time that you generate, you should be able to get the same results because of the random seed number here. 
So for this hypothetical data, I'm going to use five years of backlog data that we're going to generate from scratch here. Um, so I also have a personal YouTube channel, uh, so which was created in August of 2019. So I'm specifying it here as well. Um, and then we're going to initialize the data here with zeros, you know, just kind of like a placeholder. We're going to generate the data frame, you know, create the data frame. We're generating the growth of the data here, you know, using lens space from NumPy. And then we're using the generate growth function, importing some of the um, start and ending numbers in our data generation um, algorithm. All right, and so we're adding randomness to our uh, data here. And then in order to account for seasonal variation, um, we're using this. And occasionally when we're publishing videos, some videos might go viral. So we have this to do that. And then we just wanted to make sure that we have um, integer values here. Um, so from actual YouTube data, typically we'll have subscribers that are gained and subscribers that are lost. You know, like typical YouTube channel might have subscribers incoming and also some who might have, um, you know, unsubscribed from the channel. So the difference there would be the net subscriber. So we'll take subscriber gain and loss and then subtract them from one another, uh, ensuring that there are no negative values here. And then we're going to convert the date time column to date time format. And then displaying the data frame, we have it right here. So you're going to see that we're essentially aggregating the data into the months. So for the month of August 2019, we have gained 31 subscribers and we did not lose any subscribers. We have 317 views. And in the month of September, we gained 126 subscribers. So this is very, you know, like realistic numbers uh, for a typical channel when growing from scratch. Um, yeah, so like for me personally, I created the Data Professor YouTube channel and started from scratch in August of 2019. So started from zero um, and it, it kind of, you know, snowballed over time. So you'll be able to see that, you know, the subscriber that are accumulating over time from the net subscriber column here um, will be displayed here. So in order to find the cumulative value, you just take the summation of this column. So over time, the subscriber count will grow given that more and more content is created. All right, and so here we're gonna display the channel metrics. And in order to do that, we're gonna leverage streamless st.metric method for displaying the metric values. Um, and then we're gonna have, you know, like metrics value, like the delta display, like the growth of the views or the subscriber uh, from month to month. Um, and we're gonna add interactivity to the dashboard. So the user here or developers could select make a selection of the, the various um, input widget. And here we're use, using the st.selectbox widget. Um, they'll be able to select the date range, you know, the starting date, ending date, time frame, and also the chart type. And so here we, we're calling the cell pi metrics and the corresponding markdown as the MD metrics, MD for markdown. And then you could, you know, hop around um, as we go along as well to specific cells that you like. So yeah, we're creating helper functions in order to, you know, like format uh, values like um, having four digits and then adding a comma for indicating that it is in the thousand unit. And here we're going to aggregate the value. Remember from the prior data frame, they were monthly data. And here we're going to generate the summation um, over time. And then we're going to create the chart and based on the user selection, whether they want to display the bar chart or the area chart, we're going to differentially display that or conditionally display it according to the user selection. And so date range selection here, they'll be able to select the start date and dates. And here we're using the minimum and the maximum um, of the pandas function. All right, and users will be able to select the time frame whether they want to see the daily data, the weekly, monthly, or quarterly data. And so all of these are being performed by pandas. And then here we're going to compute the metrics here for the selected time frame. And then we're going to, you know, create four columns to display the metrics. 
First column will have the subscribers, second column views, third column watch hours, fourth column the likes, and then we're going to show the data frame as well in a expander box where user could click on it and it will expand. So this is the generated uh, dashboard that we have. So let me minimize the left panel here. So here we're showing it as provided here. Okay, I think we have to um, run this actually. Okay, I don't think we have run this already. So we're going to run it. That was like from a prior uh, run. So we run this so that we could generate the data frame and then let's run it again. All right, we're good. Okay, there you go. So the prior uh, visuals that you saw was from a previous run and now this is for the current run that we're doing right now. Um, yeah, so mentioned already the start date and date, you could select this, you know, from, you know, maybe you want to have it from the last year. So you go ahead and click on 2023, and then you could have the start date to be in September. We could have it September 1st, and then we could have it until September 1st of 2024. Uh, the time frame here is daily. So we could change this to quarterly, and you'll be able to see the quarterly metrics here. And then aside from having it as a bar, you could also have it as an area chart as well. Or revert it back to bar or make it monthly. You know, it's very interactive. Uh, users could play around with this. Um, very fun, intuitive. And yeah, you'll be able to see the cumulative metrics here. And then you'll be able to see the month over month or quarterly over quarterly or even like daily. Uh, metrics change, uh, which is specified there with the delta uh, parameter. And if you click on the expander here, you'll be able to see the underlying data used to create the charts here. And let's have a look at the channel metrics as a data frame using the column configuration parameter. So let's have a look at the end result. But before that, let's run it first. So this is the data frame uh, displayed using Stromlet and also using column config. So instead of showing only the values, you'll be able to show it, you know, with the uh, visual elements. Like here we have like a progress bar where we're showing it the value relative to the maximum value of the column. Um, we'll be able to show it, you know, as kind of like a bar chart inside a column, the watch hours, or even like a area chart as well. Um, so you'll be able to, you know, highlight hover and then you'll see the numerical values over time. And then you'll be able to see, you know, spikes and troughs in the data. Um, to do that, we're using the Stromlet package, Stromlet library. Um, we're creating this helper function for aggregating by the year. And then using pandas here. And then we're displaying it using the column config parameter. And then for each column, we're specifying, you know, like the minimum and maximum value. We're telling it how to format um, the numerical values, whether to have it as a string, and then whether we wanted to have it as a line chart, or we want to have it as a bar chart, or if we want to have it as like a progress bar. Um, we can specify that using the column config uh, parameter. And there you go. You have this dashboard. Um, you could go to the resources using the links provided below here to have access to further information into the docs for the API, which you could use for further customizing this dashboard in a Snowflake notebook. And so let me know in the comments section how you're repurposing this notebook to your own data. And let me know also what other Snowflake notebooks that you want us to create. And so love to read them all. And so all of the links to the code here is provided in the video description. If you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit on that notification button. And until next time, happy coding.